intro on the video to be honest either um so um my name is um i'm also known as mrs menopause which is a bit of a weird thing isn't it to be called um i've been called mrs menopause for about 12 years <coughs> now which is a long time and the reason that name came about was because i was diagnosed for want of a better word with a early menopause in my 30s late 30s mid to late 30s and um and i was quite vocal about my experience with it um, particularly on social media and um i think somebody was asking somebody about a question a question about menopause and they said oh you should talk to tanith she's mrs menopause and it was that, that kind of comment and it kind of stuck um and that's how my name came about and then at that time there really wasn't much information around menopause um you in the true style of my usual oversharing, <laughs> I was talking about it a lot and women wanted to know about it because at the time nobody was really being honest and open about it. It was still very taboo. Um, and it's, you know, it's come, it's come along so far in all the time that, um, you know, I've been in, been in the trenches as it were. So that's kind of really what I do. So, um, my background is, uh, fitness. Um, I kind of, retired for a couple of years, but I couldn't keep away from, from my trainers. So I went back and started teaching a little bit just cause I, Um, and I also, and I qualified that four years ago now. So that's crazy. Four years already I've been qualified. So, and, and, and amongst that other kind of things I've picked up along the way, I'm really interested in brain health. Yeah. Two, two seconds, Tan, oh, yes. you keep freezing. Is it just me or is everyone else? Can, what, is it all good for everybody or is it freezing? It's just me then. It's just my Wi-Fi. It's fine. Carry on. Sorry. I think I think we might dip in and out. So I've I've muted everybody, so I, I'm not very good at lip reading. So if you do need to say something, either pop something in the chat box, or um, you'll need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Michelle's having a nightmare with her dog. <laughs> uh, so um, my internet's been really particularly dodgy the last couple of days. Um, so hopefully it's going to hang on in there. Um, there is what you can do if you do want to ask a question just to make it easier. You can use the reactions button and there's a raise your hand function. Oh, thank you for that. I've been using Zoom for nearly a year and I've not even. Yeah. So if, I, if you go to reactions, there's like a raise your hand. There's loads of other emojis as well. So, you know, knock yourself out. Who cares? Um, <laughs> you can raise your hand. And what, what you'll see now, Nikki, if you go to participants. Uh, yep. Click on that and you'll see us all and you'll see people with their hands up. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Yeah. So that's a good way of um Thank you. Seeing, you know, otherwise it's really easy to miss people if people are like Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 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 So do we have questions? Yes, do we have questions? So shall I just shall I just um say people's names and then they can unmute Oh, there's yeah. lots of people still keep coming in, which is great. So if we go to Hillary first. So Hillary, you'll need to unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, so my question was, so I'm 55. I started officially because I had a blood test and my doctor told me I had the menopause at 50. Mm -hmm. So I've been on HRT and sort of at my last check, she sort of said, do you want to try coming off it? And I sort of went, ooh. And I'm a little bit nervous because I don't know what that's going to do. And I know you can't be on it forever. But um, I don't really know what to do or when's the best time. And I just thought, oh, not really at the moment, no, because um, just working from home, just got loads of going on at home and things. So um, I don't know how to come off it and what you do when you come off it. Do you want to come off it? Well, I don't know, because it, I mean, I, I went on it because um, I was having I was just having hot flushes and just getting myself in a state. So I haven't had those, but I don't really want to go back there. But I don't know if you come off it. They start again, really. I know uh, I probably need to try it, don't I? Yeah, a lot of people think that if you know if you come off I, I, HRT, just kind of puts off the menopause. It doesn't quite work like that. That said, okay. some women do find they do have a little bit of kickback when they cut when they come off it, but nothing like they were. I would say if you are going to come off it, um, um, I would use that kind of that time. So you know, you you want to reduce it. I wouldn't just stop. Oh um, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, I would talk to your Jeep, depending on what you're on, what form you're taking, if okay. you can, if there's any way of reducing it. Yeah, so I'm I would... on um, patches, I've changed twice a week. Yeah, so that would probably be, do you, do you use progesterone as well then? No, it's all in the one patch, yeah. 
Oh, is it? Well, pedestrian yeah. and estrogen. Yeah, because prior to that, I was having two a tabret and a patch, but then I'm on, I'm on a patch that does okay. apparently does everything for me. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I would <laughs> literally everything, washing up and everything. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I would probably if you if you do want to go down the road, two things. I would reduce it. I wouldn't just stop. Yeah, if your body's got used okay. to something and just literally stop overnight. It's there might be some bounce back out out of that, and I yeah. would use the time also to you know, look at other ducks in said row. <laughs> stress nutrition lifestyle all that yeah. stuff. that would be a really good yeah. time to really have an honest conversation with yourself about that as well um okay. yeah and see what the gp says but yeah okay good yeah, luck thank you thank you <laughs> question hillary thank you um shall we come to celia <laughs> i've put you on the spot now You're ready <laughs> you want me to come back to you come back to you okay let's go to debbie so you need to unmute yourself, Debbie. Right, I don't have a specific question, but I've just come to see what's been discussed. Okay, no worries. Wonderful. Nice to see you. Okay. Jackie, have you got anything for us? Apart from your gin and tonic. Right, I've unmuted. Um, I'm, I've got the marine coil. Mm -hmm. and this is my third one so 15 years I've had no periods whatsoever this went in in 2014 and was due to come out in 2019 if it wasn't contraceptive use but they said when it went in it could stay in for possibly nine years hmm. now I'm two years over when it should have come out I'm into year seven do I wait to year nine and then have it removed I've no idea if I'm going through the menopause, I'm 54, got no symptoms, nothing's happening as far as I'm concerned. Mm. I just don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting question. So whenever we're taking any uh, contraception around, you know, the, the age of menopause, we don't really know, un don't get a full understanding of what's going on with our body. Because if we're not having periods, that's our first go to, you know, to understand if there's some changes going on. You know, because technically, um, sorry, did you say you're 54? 54. 54. Yeah, so I mean, the average age of menopause is 51, 52 in the UK. Um, so, you know, for all you know, you may have, your periods may have stopped. And the only way you'll know is that I would say have it removed. Um, but again, this is going to be a conversation for you to have with your GP. I am not medically trained. Um, so you would need to probably go and have a chat with your GP. I've not heard of them staying in for that long, to be honest. But again, that's not just because i've heard of it doesn't mean it's not it's not something recommended you know again that's a little bit out of my remit of um you know being a gp um my my experience was i was on the coil i uh, actually but before i knew i was going through the menopause obviously i was i was younger but i was like you not not having periods because it didn't it stops my periods too um but at the time i was getting an awful lot of really really bad coccyx like excruciating coccyx pain um the my chiropractor i was seeing at the time he actually said look why don't you just have it taken out just to see if the coil is having any impact it's all in the pelvic in the basin so um i did that i had a bleed I don't even think it was a real period I just think it was just a bleed and that's um when it all it all started to fit into place that my my uh, menopause had come early da, 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 and that's that's the only way I knew was by having mine removed you might be through the other side you might not have, nothing might have happened how amazing is that well I I watched your presentation at the start of the week then I put a call into the GP which was a nightmare to get through because they just put the texts out for the next COVID jabs blah 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 and when I got through the, the reception said to me have you googled it I said I'd like a GP's opinion please so I've got a telephone conversation booked at 10 past 8 tomorrow morning so hopefully I might get ah. some answers but she didn't know yeah. if the person who was phoning me was actually qualified or was it just a practice manager <laughs> I can't believe you googled it. That, that again, when I was told I was going through the menopause, and you know, in my mid thirties, they basically the doctor said to me, you know, take some supplements, go go to Holland about it, get some supplements, and um, yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you later. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Good question. Thank you. Okay, let's come to Catherine because she's put her hand up. Oh, she's showing off. You see, she's using the reactions. <laughs> <laughs> you need to unmute yourself, Catherine. 
There you go. I, I seem to be having a very similar um, situation at the moment where back in February, my doctor told me to come off the pill because I'm 49 this year. It's the combined bill, which I had to kind of fight for. Um, but five years ago, my periods started from going really regular, just started um, where I was skipping a month. Mm -hmm. Their answer was, let's stick you on the contraceptive pill. Mm -hmm. So now I've come off. Uh, in between that, I was having the most awful night sweats on my pill-free weeks that I was literally having to change my pyjamas, change everything. I was get, getting really bad headaches mm -hmm. that I had lots of investigations for. And then in February, I came off and I had the bleed. I've had nothing since. And then I started with, which I've just found out now is a symptom of them going through the menopause is these head shocks. I feel quite dizzy and I'm really fuzzy. Mm -hmm. um, night sweats, but nothing like they were. Mm -hmm. But then I started with extremely sore down below to the point where I had to buy a ring to sit on. I've been back and forth to the doctors, swapped till blue in the face, mm -hmm. no answers, sent to Gynae, mm -hmm. Gynae examined me, um, come back in three months, neither would prescribe um, HRT, one said, you, I can't because you're under the consultant, the consultant said, come back in three months, we'll see where you're at with your periods, and I'll be honest, I was so distraught last week, I just picked up the phone and phoned um, and made a private appointment to see um, a senior consultant who took one look and said, you're extremely, um, atroph atrophic is it? Atrophy, yeah. Atrophy, yeah. you're extremely uh, atrophied and we're gonna, I'm gonna give you um, Vagifem. Good. Um, and, and on a loading dose, um, yeah. but he said three months should cover it, which, and I said to him about, you know, am I, have I, am I going through it? Have a, you know, what's going on? And he just said, we could take blood tests, but they're really expensive. Um, but your GP can do them. But I don't seem to be getting a, diff nobody's really saying. Mm. But I seem to have all the symptoms. Yeah. So um, the nice guidelines for menopause, uh, really, they, they suggest they don't really do blood tests for menopause because our hormones are vary so much even through a 24-hour period let alone in a, in, in a month and it, you know if the gps could test you on the right day of your cycle yeah. then we'd be a little bit closer to knowing but they don't they just book them in which is pretty pointless um in most cases in most cases so um i mean it sounds to me that you are perimenopausal which is the period the type period of time leading up to your final period um i'm really glad you made that appointment um to see a private you know you had to pay for that and you know i'm just disgusted that it was a guy who said you gotta wait three months yeah yeah come back he's three months. You. yeah uh, uh, and wouldn't give me i just said i'm really dry as well so she's just give me uh some uh, emollient no oh god <laughs> So, and that's all I got. And so right. Way. So, um, that, um, I mean, the, the veggie film's great. So, for those of you who don't know, ladies, it's a um, it's a pessary, a vaginal pessary, and it has um a very very small amount of yeah. um localized estrogen. So it's not it's not like taking H HRT with systemic. It's very local, and it helps so many women. <clears throat> so take that, and I would I would get yourself um decent quality like lubricant and my favorite brand would be the yes it's just yes and they do different ones they do an oil based a water based and they do like a vaginal moisturizer one as well they've got no rubbish in them you know they really help a lot of women with with comfort so it's got no hormones or anything in it it's literally just a lubricant just to give you some more comfort so would that that i couldn't understand because it was going seemed to be spreading like the dryness it was not just local it was seemed to be like round, round my back passage and everything yes. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, again, it's something that no one's no one's really talked about. So when I've had vaginal dryness, I was getting it the same as round or round the anus. It's the same. It's yeah. the same tissue. It's the state. It's what happens is when we have lower levels of estrogen, it's our mucous membranes. So it's not just vaginal. It's um, to so eyes. So women get dry eyes, dry nose. Yeah, and it's our digestion. A lot of our, our di digestion is mucous membranes. Women get digestive issues. It's really common. So it all's, you know, it's. It's, it's it affects lots of different areas so yeah absolutely just so honestly get just go i think they've got 24 i've got to think that they've got an offer on at the moment get a, get a decent just whack it on right. get some relief yeah and just obviously be careful usual things be careful what you're using when you're bathing or washing or anything water only um and just yeah keep an eye on it so to speak thank you all right okay jackie did you have something to add to that Yes, um, I was using Vagifem for three months and my GP took me off of it. And within about two, three weeks, I was back to complete dryness. I thought my prolapse was back. I went back to the GP and she said, oh, I'm going to refer you um, for another operation. I said, I don't want another operation. I said, can I not have some more Vagifem? And she said, no. And that's when she put me through to the female physio who I saw. And the female physio <coughs> you are going to be on Vagifem for the rest of your life. She said it's a repeat prescription and she wrote a really shitty letter back to my GP and now it's on repeat prescription. £10 a month goes out of my bank account and I've just got it and I only use it twice a week, a Thursday and a Sunday, the nights I don't see the partner. And everything's tickety-boo, it has to be. But yeah. as soon as they took me off, within three weeks, I was back to, like the previous lady said, everything down below, sitting, walking, running, sneezing, going to ones or number twos was horrendous yeah as soon as I was back on it I had a two week every day for two weeks dropped it down to once uh twice a week then it was fine and it's been fine ever since touch wood mm -hmm. yeah on. I mean the fact that you're getting those symptoms as well probably makes me think that perhaps you are you know if not, po uh, if not perimenopause postmenopause as well I um, didn't know if I was menopausal because she wouldn't do a blood test and because I had a prolapse repair she said it could be the after effects of the prolapse repair. So it's really wishy-washy from the GP. Yeah. The, uh, unfortunately, it's a bit hit and miss. It's so much better with GPs now. It's so much better, but it's still very hit and miss. And, you know, they don't understand the difference between a localised e uh, estrogen and a systemic estrogen. So yeah. you just, this is why these kind of these kind of talks are really important because you can hear other people's experiences and it makes you feel a bit more confident to go into your doctor and go, right, this is what I want. Because it... Yeah. We all, I think most people go into a doctor's surgery and go a bit like, oh, okay. And, you know, and feel a bit, un, uh, you know, less confident in there sometimes because we're not quite sure. You know, we're brought up, aren't we? We're raised that we, we, you know, this person in front of us should know everything. <laughs> um, and if you are going to see your GP, I would always, you know, do a bit of research, look at the nice guidelines. Um, you know, on my website, I've got a thing about, you know, what to, you know, how to prepare yourself for a visit, just so you kind of feel a bit more prepared because we don't get a lot of time. And then you can go in with, you know, for your counter arguments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I always say that when people, I'm talking to kind of postnatal clients about, because I think they just kind of go, all right, here's my check. You know, the, the, the GP does the check on them. Yeah. And they've got no questions to ask. And then no. they're left with all these issues and problems after they've had their GP sign them off um, that, you know, they really should have asked about. So it's a really good thing that you've got um, like a preparation before you meet your GP. That's something yeah. I do for postnatal women, really. Yeah, because yeah. you go a bit like, blah, 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 you know. You're talking about a part of your body that you're quite private about. You don't want to share your intimate no. secrets about, really. And especially... Um, I mean, you know, I think as as I've got older and talked about it a lot more, I've become, I don't care about it anymore. I think once you've had children, you don't care about it so much. But I think that we, we do get very, um, we do get very emotional about it and we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to kind of accept that this is happening to us. Mm. So um, that's a really good um, idea to kind of have yeah. that preparation before so that you can ask the right questions and you know you're going to get the right treatment. It's really good. Yeah. And if you don't get the answer you like, go and find somebody else. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that's so, so our bodies, it's our lives. We know we're, we know we're, we're intuitive women, and we know when something's not right. And when we're told by somebody in authority that you know, almost like you're making it up, just go away and come back in a while. You just, it's, 
damaging you know we we know our bodies and we it was well within our rights to go to, to go and get ourselves the help we need absolutely mm. okay anybody got a question celia's thought of something <laughs> <laughs> unmute yourself celia hi hi <laughs> hello yeah so i was gonna say i'm well i'm post-menopausal um and sort of some four five years ago now really they decided i've done dusted and just to say to jackie um i had the marina coil right the way through and um, my doctor said just leave it in until you sort of think you're done and dusted she said i'm quite happy for it to stay another two years if you want um which is sort of what i did so it took me all the way through and i'm sure that helped hugely um, I got I got away with very few symptoms, um, mostly nighttime stuff. Um, I never had any day day hot flushes or anything. But my thing is now, I mean, yes, I'm definitely postmenopausal, but I do still get hot at night, <laughs> um, even in midwinter when it's frosty and I've got the windows open. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's anything that you've come across sort of foods or supplements or anything like that that people have said just just help a little bit on the the nighttime stuff it's not full-blown night sweats just but it off. is enough to have to throw the covers off and yeah. cool down for a bit and i do hear back. this a lot and um i don't really know the answer to your question i'm gonna be mm. completely honest i don't know it's you know i've i have heard this that you know well, you hear some women, their symptoms seem to linger and that would be a different conversation. I'd have to kind of look into that mm. a little bit more and kind of figure out what was going on. But obviously it's quite hard for me to give gene generic um, information about supplements and that kind of stuff because I don't yeah, know, you know, so, the person, yeah. you know, I need to know more about the individual in front of me. But, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know really know what else to say apart from you just got to just do what you've been doing, keeping cool. Mm. There's nothing else. Nothing that you... No, you not really. <laughs> You know, I mean, it might... I can throw down my throat. <laughs> I mean, you could try, um, you know, I mean, it'd be the usual things to try with diet, the usual triggers, mm. alcohol, sugar, mm. you know, caffeine, yeah. spicy <laughs> yeah. foods. They're, they're, they tend to be the, the, the ones we start at, you know, if I'm talking yeah. to like, generically, those are the ones you could begin with. And and I would you know take maybe start taking out one at a time and see and, and see see what happens see if it does get any better mm. and just be a bit curious. That's a good place to start. Yeah, yeah. Supplement wise, I don't really think so. I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it's just keep really healthy, keep a really you know really nutritious mm. diet as much as you can. Keep ad adding in all the good stuff. You know, feast not famine for those of you that did watch the presentation, and. Um, you know, and th th you, you could try a menopause supplement, a generic mm. one. Sometimes mm. some women find they're good. Um, yeah. Give you a little bit of an extra, some, some of the phytoestrogens and stuff. It may help. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I can't be much more helpful. Yeah, no, that's all right. I just wondered if you'd had, had any feedback on anything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, no, that's cool. <laughs> I, I'm fairly symptomless at the moment. I, I, my period stopped in the summer last year um, and I was getting a similar thing where I was getting really hot at night not really occasional where I was really sweating and I actually started taking um, have you heard of black cohosh tannin mm -hmm. so I started taking that um, so I did a bit of like just research on what could help me um, and like you say so it's more of a sort of generic menopausal type thing and yeah. I must say for me that I don't I don't wake up feeling really hot at night. I actually have got a more natural duvet now as well. I bought a, a, a sheep's wool duvet. Um, so it's it's really thin and it's really warm um, and it kind of seems to regulate. You might want to look at things like your mattress and your duvet as well. The late, I find that I had to get rid of my latex mattress years ago. I found it too hot. Yeah. I found it really, I found that really made me really hot. So yeah, anything natural. I think it's kind of investing in something a bit more natural and thinking about your duvet as layers. So maybe having a couple of really thin 
duvets rather than one big chunky one especially mm -hmm. you know I mean uh, you know it's difficult isn't it because if you're sleeping with your partner um then you both need to be warm but you could actually just get a single duvet <laughs> or a double one and just you know but yeah I, I I certainly found myself that black cohosh seemed to work for me but you know wh whether there's actually any sort of no, no, no. I mean, out of all, out of a lot of the herbs, I mean, obviously, there's no money in, in the research in herbs because is there? Because the pharmaceuticals yeah. can't get their hands on it, can they? But actually, black cohosh has been a fair amount of research, and out of all of them, it's it's a good one. If someone was sweating, sage is a good one as well. If someone's actually getting sweating before just getting hot, the black cohosh might be a good one. And I would say it. Um, it's worth doing a bit of uh, research as well. I wouldn't be going to get it from Holland or Barrett. I'm not bashing Holland and Barrett is just the only shop I can think of but I think it's really worth investing in a higher quality supplement mm -hmm. otherwise the, just the dosage is just so low you mm -hmm. just can't get as much of the of, of the herb that you need so or see a herbalist yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. Nice. okay so Liz you've got your hand up hi Tanith hi Nikki hi, hi. I I'm just following on from what Celia was saying actually um, I was taking something which a friend of mine who works in a doctor's surgery, I was trying something called Serenity by Wellsprings. Is that the cream? Yeah, a progesterone, progesterone. the natural, natural progesterone cream. And that really helped with my night hot flushes, you know, night sweats. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not taking it now because I've I'm actually, I've just had the marina coil put in last November, but I just say the, the Serenity cream is really good. Um, well, I found it and it's natural. It's made from yam plant. So you can, you know, do, there's quite a lot of research on their website to read up on that one. But I suppose my question to you, Tanif, is I was bleeding really, really heavily for months and months and months last year, and they didn't really, I had tests done just to check it wasn't endometrial hyperplasia, which it wasn't, but they couldn't really say why I was bleeding so heavy. So whether or not that was start of menopause or, or what, it just suddenly came on and it just carried on. I carried on bleeding for months. So in the end, I, I not, went- So you mean, just sorry to interrupt, do you mean you weren't having a cycle? You were just continuously bleeding? Yeah, continue, every day, heavy bleeding for months. Oh so God, in the end, yeah. Oh, I, it was anemic everything you know my iron levels went right down to seven I was just exhausted so in the end they did a DNC mm -hmm. and they put the marina coil in mm -hmm. which, which they've said they can leave in I mean I'm 49 this well in a couple of months so five years for the coil which will give me my progesterone and then they've given me vagi fem as well just for the estrogen like you say localized to the mm -hmm. womb um, so again, I, I wouldn't know when I'd go through the menopause. I mean, my, my night sweats have stopped. I mean, I feel much better, just even though it's not systemic, I feel better, you know, all round. I'm, one, I'm not bleeding all the time, so that, you know, I don't feel so drained. So the but night it, sweats, did they stop after you had the coil? Yeah. I mean, they, they certainly got better if I'm taking that natural progesterone, but I don't want to take that serenity stuff at the moment whilst I've walked in case I don't know if I'm overloading the progesterone that I've already got from the coil um so I've kind of thought well I won't use that now if I've got progesterone um from that so but yeah I mean I've still had a bleed monthly since November um on the coil okay. so what Again, I wouldn't know if that's part of the coil settling down at the moment or if it's just a regular period. I mean, do, do some women get a period still whilst on the coil? Yeah. Yeah. It tends to be much lighter. Yeah. Um, I mean, are you are you keep, are you tracking it? Yeah. Cycles. So is it yeah. twenty eight days or? No, no, not twenty eight days. It's a little bit random. It's about sort of. I don't know exactly, but it's kind of. I've had. What have I had? They've had it in in November, and I've had three periods. Yeah, I would just. And I think that's a really good thing just just to say to everyone. Really, if you if you're noticing changes, I would um, 
you know, track it, diarise it, journal it, whatever it is, because it, it's then you, you you might start to see a pattern. And if, when if you do need to go and get some, you know, advice or talk to someone about it, at least you can go back and say, oh, this this has been happening. Otherwise, we tend to kind of forget a little bit. <laughs> well, maybe that's just me. But yeah, so it's good. I would keep tracking it. Um, and again, you just, I just, I guess you just got to keep an eye on your symptoms. You you sound really in tune with your body. Yeah, I, I feel all right actually at the moment. You know, yeah. I feel quite healthy. I take you know, I take vitamins, supplements, I do what I can, my diet's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so at the minute, I'm just going to wing it and see what happens. And, you know, if that coil, I mean, I will probably, by the time the coil's ready to come out, I'll be 53. But I, they said, you know, if you're not needing it for contraception, I suppose, then you can keep it in for a couple more years. Yeah. So again, I'm just going to wing it now. But if I get any symptoms, can you still take HRT whilst having vagi fem and the marina yeah, well, coil you could have, they could give you oestrogen right i've got the oestrogen from the vagi fem but yeah but that that's literally localized that won't right. impact any you know, other symptoms because it's such a tiny dose okay um so yeah so if you did suddenly get symptoms depending on what your symptoms were if you did get symptoms back you you may may you know right okay oestrogen but again that's going to be a conversation with your there's no reason yeah. why not the conversation but say at the minute i'm just going to wing it and see how far i get before i get into trouble with any symptoms really so it's interesting isn't it how we kind of set ourselves up to expect symptoms as well yeah. I think it's really worth noticing our language around menopause um and um as much as it's wonderful that we're all talking about it it's in the media it's you know it's it's everywhere there's loads of people people like me you know um talking about it and helping women sometimes i think it's swung so far the other way that all we see and hear is a negative side but of course we want that because we want some identification but it's almost like now we're being led to believe that it's going to be this terrible awful experience mm -hmm. um and i think it's almost like we're, we're not thinking ourselves into a worse menopause but it's kind of you know we're almost kind of I don't know. Does that make sense? Like we're trying to almost, yeah. I think we're all. I think we're all preparing ourselves, or 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 being equipped with the knowledge of what we can do, where we can find the help. Really, I think before yeah. we need before we need it, so we can know how to access yeah. it. We know what to do, and we know perhaps you know what we what's on offer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And well, I mean, again, there's a lot of women that have just buried their heads. Don't want to talk about it. There's a lot of women don't get any symptoms at all, and we don't really hear those stories, though, do we? You know, there's there's so many different things, and you know, really, I mean, we should be talking about this in our early forties. Yeah. That's yeah. when we should be getting ready. But not not many women in their early forties are going to really want to talk about menopause. You know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Thank you. A bit like um. Talking. You know, we don't really think about um, preparing for childbirth. We just think about how we're going to get pregnant and, you know, getting pregnant. We're not really yeah. thinking about the preparation for our body before that, which is, you know, you know, that's my bag, everybody, is that really everybody should know the right things to do to get themselves in the right situation before they even think about having children. But no one does. Um, no, exactly. And, and it, yeah. It's exactly that, and it's it's a lot easier being getting your body prepared for any big shift, whether it's pregnancy or or menopause, isn't it? Rather than trying to fire fight the symptoms when you're in it. I mean, that's so much harder to do, but that's just the nature of um, that's just the nature of being a human, I think, isn't it? it? Is yeah. Okay, Michelle. Nice to see you. I saw your dog was um was going mental there in the background. Oh, can't hear you. You might have to take your headphones off. Yeah. Okay, that's it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, she was having a witching hour. So she's <laughs> <laughs> oh god, sleep now. I took the earphones out, she's waking up. Yeah, so um coming up to 54, um, I had last bleed about three years ago. First couple of years I thought I sailed through everything. Um, everything seemed fine. I pretty much changed my diet at that time, but mostly plant-based, lost a couple of stone. Everything was going great. I would say I had a lot more aches and pains and mind wasn't working as maybe as sharp as it might have been. So yeah, just sort of 
brain fog and struggling with focus. But then just over a year ago, I realised I'd got um, a prolapse, which I don't think is that bad, but it does cause me problems. And then I realised there was some dryness. I had, I think the main thing for me is the last year or so has been really stressful. So because I've got all my hormones are trying to work with the stress, I don't think I'm producing as many of, of the um, oestrogen and progesterone. I'm very lucky because a close friend of mine's a um, nutritional therapist. And I remember her saying, if, if your adrenals are down and struggling when you go into menopause, you're going to be on the floor because they're, they're the ones that need to pick up and produce the other hormones for you. So I think the main thing that changed for me was so much stress coming back into my life. Mm. So I've started to use um, some natural um, vaginal oestrogen cream and progesterone, but I'm just a little bit concerned because I had a breast cancer scare a few years ago and I'm still being monitored for that. And it's also in the family. So I didn't want to go HRT route. So I've stopped. I keep dipping in and out of using the creams purely because I'm just concerned as to any sort of risk factor. So it even actually says on the creams that I've got, this can cause a risk of cancers. So I'm just trying to work out really, I do think I feel a benefit from using the oestrogen cream, although my weight's gone back on a bit again, but I think with the stress and not being as strict with my diet isn't helping. So just really, is there any thoughts on, on the safety of, of using the, um, the hormonal creams are they a lot safer than actually taking something orally and do they outweigh you know any other risks really hmm. um what what are these creams you're talking about and um, they're the one uh, the other ladies just mentioned i was on before the natural progesterone the cream i was on that before but um this one is where it was a homeopathic clinic where i have my thermal imaging breast um scans done um, and they recommended the, these other ones. I can't think of the name of them. I've got them upstairs. I should have brought them down with me. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so they, they've recommended those to use. My, my GP recommended a vaginal oestrogen cream. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, well, these ones are more natural. But then when they arrived and they actually say, I know they're an American um, based company. And then when they actually say on them um, have been linked with cancers, it sort of made me a little bit wary because I try and do everything as naturally and as holistically as I can um so so yeah it's just trying to weigh up whether they're the right thing to do can I ask why you're, so the so the creams you're not talking you're just talking about a topical cream are you yeah so the oestrogen cream I use vaginally and okay. the progesterone cream you just put on thin areas of your skin so like on your wrist behind your knees things like that yeah yeah okay okay and okay so you're t and you're taking the natural eastern cream because of dryness and changes and prolapse yeah and prolapse and the progesterone cream for other symptoms yeah well and to balance it because when i had my hormone tests done everything was down so my cortisol levels were down my progesterone was down my good oestrogen was down and my progesterone to oestrogen ratios weren't great what because tests do you have done it was the saliva, just the saliva test to actually check all of the, the hormone levels. So I had them done at the homeopathic clinic because I was on the floor, basically. I was just really, really tired and wiped out. Mm -hmm. But life is has gone crazy stressful again the last 18 months. I've moved away from it, which is why I think I was coping a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's really stressful again at the moment. Um, so sleep's not great when it's because I'm a bit of an insomniac anyway. So... When I get stressed, I get jittery of an evening and I can't settle. So I tend to not, not sleep so well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I don't know anything about the natural HRT creams. Mm. I'd say I don't. I do know things. I d it's just not something I have really know enough about. And again, I can't be saying whether it causes cancer or anything like that. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I would definitely be if you if you're using it and you're worried. I would probably get I'd probably get some professional advice around that. Depending on types of cancers, you know, and family history. There's so much involved in that conversation. Um, I mean, there are there are specialists, you know, 
cons consultants who know what they're talking about. And actually, there's there there are women that have had breast cancers and estrogen dominant type cancers, and they are they are on HRT. So you know it's. It's, you know, it's, I think it's so dependent on the on the person you've got in front of you. So it all depends on so much whether to say that it's risky or not. Yeah, I sort of felt probably less risky because it was a natural form than a synthetic hormone. But but then not everything holistic's the right thing, is it? No, exactly. And you know, um, a lot of the HRT now is the called body body ready. It's uh, uh, you know bioidentical to our body um you know the days of being given premarin horses urine you know extracted estrogen extracted from horses urine are hopefully well behind us and a lot of the hrt i mean i'm on hrt and i have been you know for on and off over 10 years now um and uh, you know and the, what I, I used to get it all made up and made in a chemist and compounding chemist naturally they've moved on so far with their with the with the, with their um with the types of hrt that i what i get from the gp is body ready anyway so it isn't it's all right it's made in a lab but then so is the yam cream i mean it's you know it's it's just trying to it's trying not to be so black and white i think around around those kind of conversations and and that's the thing isn't it we we only t we can only make up our mind with the information that we've kind of been given for me um, yeah, I would have loved, personally, I would have happily not had to go on HRT, mm. um, but I was in my thirties and I was, you know, I was, for me, my, my menopause affected my mental health to the point that I was actually, you know, when I, when I found myself Googling, what's the, you know, the easiest and quickest way to kill yourself. I thought, you know, I need to probably get some help. Um, and I went on HRT and within three days, somebody had put the lights back on. So that's why I'm like, we need to just, you know, it's, it is, it's, it's, I'm pro choice because some women really need the help and they really need it quickly. Um, so, you know, that's what, that's what I mean. I think there's so individual circumstances. We're all so individual inside and out. We've all got different stuff going on. So it's, it's, it's quite a hard thing to know what the risk factors are. For me, my risk factors is like, well, you know, I'm gonna, you know, am I gonna attempt to take my own life or am I gonna go on HRT for a bit? It's like, there was no, there was no, um, no comparison. Um, but you know, this is why I talk about this stuff because it's, you know, it's, it's life or death. And when women are being, I'm not saying this is you, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but I see so much shaming around HRT and women think taking, taking HRT is, uh, copping out, not being a real woman, you know, and I, that kind of thing just makes me so mad because this is people's lives we're messing around with, um, you know, and I would have loved to not have taken anything, but anyway, big tangent, but I just think it's really important to kind of, you know, recognize that we all have different levels. Now, I'm really glad. Did you watch my video? I haven't because I was away. I was don't worry, don't worry, because one of the things in in I really talk about is stress, because you obviously your 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 nutritional therapist friend knows you know the impact of our uh, you know, chronic constant high stress hormones has on our, our hormones as a woman, particularly mm. around menopause. We just don't have our body just cannot cope with those stress hormones the same way it could when we're younger. It's mm. just a fact. It is just the way it is. So you you saying you've got you know you've had that. 18 months of a higher stress period of course that's going to impact how you're feeling so in the video i talk about you know sometimes we've got to look we've got to look be a bit brave and look at the bigger stuff it might not be so much about the creams it might be going let's have a look at the let's have a look at the stress and how you can start to find uh, maybe an evening routine to help you bring yourself down because that would affect your appetite <laughs> it would affect your sleep you know and if and, and it's it's been able to step back and see how certain areas are of our life can affect so much more of ourselves as a woman. So that's kind of where I come from in my approach when I'm helping menopausal women. So brilliant awareness, Michelle, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And I, I guess the main part for me, because I've sailed through, well, it's not sailed through, I've had aspects, but I've managed with it. But my main thing now is the, um, the prolapse and the atrophy. Yeah. So yeah. I'm guessing if I'm looking at that, I'm probably better, am I, with the cream rather than something orally that's actually just targeting the area where I need the support most? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would probably, if I were you, if I was you, I would probably go and talk to my GP or I would talk to somebody about what really are the risks, what's the facts, what are they mm -hmm. talking about? Give me the numbers 
and give me what that what that risk factor is and then i would because it's such a tiny amount in the estrogen cream if you got um, someone did a post on it i can't remember the facts now but it, you know i read it and i was like it's the tiniest tiniest amount it's like one this is probably going to be so wrong it's like one contraceptive pill a year or something. it's like it's ridiculously tiny it's probably not that but it's ridiculously tiny so go and have a conversation mm. find out yeah okay that's yeah. wonderful thank you yeah, no worries thank you abby let's come to abby you just need to unmute yourself lovely sorry not very good at this oh hello uh yeah hi sorry hello <laughs> like missing in action for quite a while sorry um don't worry i'm gonna be 47 um in a couple of months and in i hadn't had periods for about five months and i spoke to the gp on the phone um obviously with the whole covid and everything and um, she said, well, you can take um, HRT um, or a, um, a, a sort of topical estrogen cream. And I asked her what the difference was. And she was like, well, there isn't really any, just whatever you want to do. And I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I just said, well, you know, I have endometriosis um, and you know, I don't know if this is the menopause, is there any kind of like problems if I take it and I don't need it or, you know, could it have a detrimental effect? No, no, it's fine, just take it. And if it's not, if you know, and if it's not any good, you just stop taking it and it's all fine. And I took it for a month and it was very much not fine um, from pretty much the beginning um like physically and mentally mm -hmm. um to the, so so I, I have a history of mental health issues um and it suddenly like plummeted my sort of baseline of being able to cope just through the floor overnight yeah. Um, so I asked if I could start and I was having very painful symptoms and bleeds just almost straight away. Um, so I asked if I could stop taking it. So I literally only took it for a month. Um, so I think I stopped taking it um, on like kind of like 10th of February or something like that, whenever it was. Um, and I'm like fighting to get any kind of normality back and I've sort of been back in contact with the GP to just say I'm really struggling and they're like it's not the HRT you only took it for a month you know blah blah you're low in vitamin D and I just I know fine well it's the HRT you know obviously there are you know life is a bit weird at the moment um but I'm now they basically said, wait till you feel normal again and we'll try something else. And I just, at the moment, I don't feel like I'm ever going to feel normal again yeah, after yeah. like one month of this ridiculousness. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just hearing what people are saying about this cream makes me feel a bit cross because she made it seem like they were completely interchangeable. And she so do you want to just clarify because, sorry yeah yeah so the cream okay um depends what cream she was talking about she said estrogen um estrogen cream topical cream okay yeah so that is it a gel was it a gel or cream i i don't know no no you I didn't don't. take that so um god i mean i i need to I do. I use an Eastern gel, which is rubbed in transdermally, so it's all straight into my bloodstream. Yeah, oh, um, it was. It was meant to be like a topical cream not, that you. Not vag vag vaginal. I you, think so. See, this is where yeah, there's a big difference between vaginal estrogen because it's such a tiny amount, and yeah. estrogen, which is either a patch, generally a patch or a gel. Yeah. No. Th th this was a. Uh, vaginal 
cream. Yeah, so the vaginal cream is literally just to work on anything that's going on with our genitals, basically. Yeah, because that was the thing. So just concerned uh, around sort of the prolapse issues and the fact that if uh, if it was um, like plummeting sort of estrogen levels and the it you know it was it was more around the prolapse thing than anything else and yeah. And but you've had five it's... months without any periods. Yeah. Okay. So it's tricky. But now we... I've had more periods in yeah. the last. So you're probably feeling pretty, um, pretty dry. I'm having a period now. I've had like just, just ridiculously heavy periods. Just um, absolutely. Yeah. You just need yeah. to. Uh, you just need to build up your iron levels again. Right. Your ferritin levels. So, have they done other blood tests for you? Have they tested things? I mean, you mentioned vitamin D. Do you know if your GP's done any other blood tests? Um, they did. Uh, they did a load of blood tests. I don't know what they tested for. All they said was, um, you're low in vitamin D. It's like, well, yeah. Well, I mean, so is everybody. <laughs> but have you done anything to address that? In all seriousness. Yes, I've got. I've got some vitamin D, D tablets because that can really affect especially if it's you know if you're if you're like me and you know it's you tend towards like the mental health stuff yeah you know, worth getting the vitamin d in um if you can get your and i would say this to everyone you know get hold of your test results right okay look at your test results look at the ranges look where you are and get them and look at them study them this is your body because you know you could be in the normal range, but you could be right at the top or right down the bottom, and there's such a big difference between those two ends of the scale. And the scale's getting bigger and bigger because the way they do the blood testing. But um, but you know we've got to take some kind of ownership for what's going on. And and you know and I know it's just numbers, but at least you can see you get a bit more of an understanding what's going on. Because you know it might be your ferritin levels might be really low, which is your where we store your iron. So yeah. that can have an impact on how you're feeling. I'm sh I'm pretty sure they're probably pretty low now if you've been bleeding that much. Yeah. But you know have a look and see what's going on. Um, it's tricky because at forty seven, you're not. You, you, you're not typically peri. The doctor probably wouldn't assume you were perimen. Well, she obviously has assumed you're perimenopause. Yeah. That. Was you getting any other symptoms? Um, sort of diff difficulty sleeping, and I was getting some kind of hotness at night, but not, not they weren't particularly bothering me. No. Okay, I mean there are different types of HRT. Not that I'm, I'm suggesting you that you know you need to go back on, but for you, for what's going with it, because of your reaction to it, and because you've got some endometriosis. That's what you said, didn't you? Did you say yeah, stuff going on? So there's already a hormonal imbalance. There's already probably excess um, estrogen, so you're probably estrogen dominant. I would have thought somewhere right. along the line. But but the, those kind of tests we have to have done privately. Okay and unfortunately they're not that cheap right <laughs> yeah okay um you know um but they are really valuable that i mean i don't go to testing all the time with clients but you know if if there's something i can't quite see and there's a, you know there's something else going on then i would probably you know get into doing some testing but oh, sounds like you need to see a different gp in all honestly um yeah i mean i haven't been able to speak to the same person twice yet so <laughs> Um, Maybe that's, that's a benefit these, for this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't give up on yourself. Yeah, just, you know, especially, and it's horrible, especially if you're feeling, you know, vulnerable and, and you know, tired and if your mental health's not right, you know, there's not a lot of fight probably, is there, for you to have to go in and try and... No, I'm just a little bit terrified that if one month of the stuff they gave me could have such a... Um, huge effect that's still trying to get back from i'm just terrified of anything even vaguely related to hormones now because i would, I would if i were you go and google estrogen dominance symptoms. okay okay thank you that would be my if i had to take a guess obviously i have yeah. no idea about your, your your history but that would be my guess it sounds like you've got probably quite a lot of estrogen going on or your estrogen progesterone ratio so it may yeah go and have a look at that because it that's what i'm feeling might have happened okay thank They've you added more fire to the fire
Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you feel better. Can <laughs> I just ask a question, Tanith, in terms of like sleep and anxiety and kind of mental health? Do you ever recommend people to take inositol? To take what? Inositol. What's that? Ah. So <laughs> I, I, I'm asking you because I just wondered if you'd heard about it and whether you use it with clients. I started to use it with people that had PCOS. Oh, okay. What is it? Um, inositol. Oh, no, I have heard of it. Is it a pink box? Uh, it's, it's a, I've just got it from my protein. It's just a powder. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I have heard of it. So I just add it in. And I, I, for me, because I, I'm a bit of a mental health issue as well. Um, Yay, I, I, yeah, we're all mental. Um, <laughs> I, I had lots and lots of uh, postnatal depression uh, post kids, and it went on for a long time and like, plummeted me a bit like Tanith. Uh, to the dark depths and I one thing I do find that still comes back is a little bit of anxiety and I think some of that is to do with menopause um, as well mm -hmm. uh, any any sort of times when I get a real build-up of stress I just stop sleeping well at night and just you know worrying about things just ridiculous thoughts all the rest of it and I've just found that I go just regularly take that now I make a protein shake most days so I just put the powder into the shake um, and just oh, I just don't I just don't really notice I'm taking it but I notice when I'm not if you know what I mean you only have to have a very small amount um, and it's just really helped me and it was something that I knew about because of as I say PCOS clients clients that have polycystic ovary syndrome um, I'm really struggling to lose weight um, it's just one of those things that really helps with balancing everything out and um, seems to help with PCOS clients with weight loss but also there was that element when I was looking into it with the anxiety and the stress um just helping to balance you so mm. that I'm like looking at it now I'm just having a quick look to see what where, where it comes from yeah yeah well it's always good to know yeah I think there is actually a supplement that has this in but you know if you can just get it from I'm my protein yeah, yeah to get it in a bag whack it in a you know it might be a good one to to do because um Hi, Abby. thank yeah. you I'm good to try that yeah, you're all mental, Abby. Don't worry. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who would be? I didn't, I didn't need any. Yet. I help. mean, come on. Like, oh my God. <laughs> you're not alone, and I think this is the thing, and this is why this kind of thing is really important. Because the more we talk about it and share this stuff, and for our own uh, for our own sanity to be able to offload and share stuff, and then you know hear other women going through the similar thing. Not you know we don't want anybody else to be going through anything horrible, but in, in a way it's nice because we go oh god yeah that's me I felt like that too oh yeah that's happened to me and it just makes us feel otherwise I think we all can feel very much alone on our journeys, yeah. and I think as women we 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 need connection we need to be connected and the last year we've just been so disconnected from each other. <laughs> In many ways anyway Absolutely. any more questions well, anybody got any more questions claire oh we got and carrie ann did you put carrie ann put a hand up so claire and carrie ann so let's get let's go to claire first and then we'll come to carrie ann okay hello um yeah i've just got a quick well quick question um i've probably had over a period of about um seven years mm -hmm. uh i'd say i've had um five rounds of IVF and yep. then last August my period stopped I'm 46 so last August my period stopped um and I've probably had about every probably about six times since then I get a period of about two weeks where I'm just get the hot sweats um clammy in bed um can't sleep um those kinds of things but my real I suppose my real question is have you ever had any experience with people who have had IVF that it then can bring on because obviously you have a lot of hormones and they mess yeah. about with your hormones quite a lot have you ever had any experience of people who've had a lot of IVF that then have sort of an earlier menopause compared to other people I'm not sure I've, I've got one of my one of, one of my um I've got a friend who had IVF had her first child and then felt like she was kind of going into early menopause so I think she was in her mid 40s but with but the, I don't know what she had I don't know what treatment she had or whatever but she had another some more IVF and she had a second child um and I think now she's kind of gone into an early menopause so um whether it triggers it or not I don't know um but I will say I thought I'd just share that she 
she conceived so it's you know it's, okay. it's very much it's possible yeah well, that's the thing because I've got another I've got one egg left in the freezer as it were. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna sort of give it another go so yeah. but I'm hoping that with, with these you know well hopefully I won't go through it with hot sweats and everything else because so, I need my sleep <laughs> yeah I'm exactly that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah so um yeah so anyway hopefully that won't affect it so yeah no because you I mean I don't know a lot enough about IVF but I mean you, you are given hormones and stuff anyway aren't you you're, you're given yeah. so I think that probably just pauses it doesn't it whatever's going on okay yeah well that's good then okay so hopefully for that time I'll yeah I think so yeah I mean it'd be no other reason why but yeah so Okay. trickier one isn't it again it's one of those ones you just don't know no okay no. yeah okay Good luck. thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> here we are hello um i'm 42 and um, i've been sort of fobbed off by various doctors i gave up breastfeeding with my son just over a year ago and since then i've had really heavy periods hot flushes like all over the body, put hot flashes during the day, wake up hot, um, and they just called me off saying, oh, it's because I've stopped breastfeeding, my body adjusting. They've tried um, putting me on contraceptive pills, which don't agree with me, my moods and my mental health just goes all out the window. Um, and so they've tried like various ones, and I've said, no, no more, I don't want it, I don't, I can't, I can't cope with that. Um, they just said, well, you're just going to have to ride it out and let it happen. Because I'm too early to go through that other sort of thing. Need to see a different GP for sure. Yeah. How dare they just dismiss it without even investigating it? They, they um, gave me some ultrasound scans to, for fibroids and said, no, that's not the case. That's not why you've got the heavy periods. Um, they, they just said, oh, that's your, just your body dusting from stopping your breast, breastfeeding. And, yeah. and your, your body just eventually will stick itself out. With all the hot um, else alongside i'm not convinced that's what's going on no well no and again this comes back to our innate wisdom as being a woman mm. we know don't we we know if something's not quite right or something's going on so um a good org organization i'm not, not sure what they've got these days i haven't worked with them for a few years now there's the daisy network and they um are a charity that helps women that have gone go, going through like premature um menopause like some women are really early even teenage girls um but they may have more information on their website perhaps for you to maybe i mean they might have some like you know handouts and and questions and stuff or maybe maybe give you some ideas of where else you can go next to kind of get some answers so maybe go and go and check out their their website um and just don't you know don't take no for an answer trump be going i would get a second opinion yeah hope you get it sorted it's rubbish isn't it i think what we're taking away from this is just generally through our journey as a woman we're pretty badly treated by yeah. the medical profession well i mean i mean you know you you know you know you well, you know with working with women you know with prolapse i mean i've had I only had mild one but you hear awful stories that women are just fobbed off fobbed off left for years and years and years and you're just like what yeah it's like you've had a baby what do you expect yeah uh, I yeah, know. my friend was told that when she went to the GP after having, she's an older mum, she's got two kids, and she went and saw a GP because she was just exhausted, just like really tired and not feeling, and the, and the doctor apparently said, she goes, well, what do you expect? You went, what do they call it? Not a geriatric, an older mum or something. She's, yeah, I was I was called geriatric. That's it, yeah, like, you're, yeah. 32, having twins, oh, you're a geriatric mother. Geriatric mum, she's like, what are you talking about? Just help me, can't you just, you know, she said she was a woman as well, she said she's a right old bad luck, she was really horrible to her. Awful, when you're down, that's just what you need, isn't it? Someone just saying, you know, just get on with it. <laughs> Jackie, you got your hand up again. Yes, I have. Um, you might may recall, when I had my prolapse operation, I had like two years of recovery, which was really horrific. They said I could drive within six weeks. Bollocks. It wasn't six weeks. It was two years before I was finally felt human. I could have sex and life was back to normal. And then I had another like relapse where I'd done too much gardening, blah, blah, blah. And the prolapse really it's ugly head again. And I went into panic mode. I went to the GP and she said, oh, I'll just send you for a, another operation. And I went, I don't want another operation. I live on my own. You know, I'm an independent woman. I'm not going to have another two years. Crap. 
And she's like, oh, but that's what I recommend. I said, well, there must be something else. And I really had to fight my back. And she said, oh, should I refer you to a female physio? I thought, the first time I've bloody heard of it in four years. I was yeah. so angry with her. Yeah, I know. Uh, and just like Tana said, you have to really fight to get what you really want. I think that uh, um, a lot of it is down to us and it's down to us, like Tana said, about preparing yourself, thinking mm. about you. OK, you want some answers, but if you don't get the answers, then go find them somewhere else. You don't have to take that person's opinion just because they supposedly are your general practitioner doesn't mean to say that they are going to look after you that they might have they might be have worked back to back to every 10 minute appointments and you came in and they thought oh god not her again you know here she goes again about a prolapse <laughs> you know and if, if that is the case you go in armed with your questions you don't get answers to your questions you go you go somewhere else you find another doctor some gps have um some gps now do have uh, specialist nurses menopause specialist nurses so it's always worth, you know, asking if there is anybody that, or even some of the GPs now specialise. So it's worth asking that question as well. See if there are any, any specialists around. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, just, did you have a, did you have another question? Liz, you got your hand up. Sorry, I didn't think I had my hand up. <laughs> did you, was, did you? Did you want to ask anything else? I have got, oh yeah, I have got my hand up. No, I don't need to ask anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can I just take... say, um, someone's just put in, who, who put that in? Um, about the ashwagandha is a good yeah, supplement. Yeah, me. So that's something, yeah, so that's an adaptogen um, herb, which is, which works on balancing your body, giving it what it needs. So it is a really good supplement um, for if times of stress. I'm actually, it's in my shopping basket at the moment. I'm just about to, because I haven't been on it for a while, but I'm, just feeling it a little bit at the moment, you know what I mean? So um, I'm going to be putting myself on it for a shorter, so probably for just, you know, a month or two and see how I go. The thing with supplements are, we use them for a reason. Don't feel like you have to be on them for, you know, some people stay on the same ones for years and years and years. And it's like, you need to change brands. You need to revisit and look at what you're taking and why you're taking it. You know, our body's always changing. But yeah, ashwagandha is great. What is it again, sorry? It's in the chat. It's, a, it's an abjectogen. It's a, like an Ayurvedic um, uh, herb. It's really well used, yeah. What, what sort of symptoms? Just Stress. It's a really good one. for. It's, it's really common stress. for stress and anxiety. Um, it's very nourishing. It's very um, like a, a tonic-y type of herb. It's good for if you don't sleep very well as well. There you go. I, I like wild nutrition one um again it's you know a little bit more expensive um but i know i know the company you know i mean i know how they made it i know the ethics i like you know that's what i that's, i don't mind paying anyway a little bit more if yeah. you, I, I know where it's coming from it's got no crap in it as well yeah, yeah. all these things are bulked out yeah. right excellent well are we I'm, done i think we're done aren't we is everybody brilliant asked all the questions they wanted to ask and <clears throat> the information they needed I have recorded this. Is everyone okay. right with me sharing it in the groups that I've got? Yeah. Obviously, we've yep. some of us have shared things that are very personal. We're all all right with that? Yeah. Good. Excellent. They always let you know, can't they? If they're not. <coughs> I will edit it. She says. Um, we can find me at Mrs. Menopause. Yes. <laughs> if you want to find out any more about the thing, what I do, you can go and have a look. If you haven't watched the video, watch the video and let me know what you think, if it was useful or not. Yeah, all your contact details are on there i'll share them in the groups anyway yeah it's all in there yeah 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 right. i've got a rush off i'm very oh, sorry that's all right thanks for your time if you need that's what's coming i'm gonna go see if she goes okay. all right take care bye. Bye. bye bye everyone thank bye. you so much right everyone thank you very much for joining me um just very quickly to say that this time next month i have um asked anna crow to um, come in and talk to us about um, thinking about prolapse as a tension rather than a weakness. Um, I have spoken to her. She, the, only, the only thing with it is that it's more than likely going to be during the day on a Friday because that's all she can fit in. So I'm going to go with her. Um, what would happen then is that if people can't, if there's no one that can make it, what I want is your questions. So if you can send me questions, we, what I'll do is I'll ask her your questions and make sure that you get all the answers that you want and she explains things for you. So, and then that will be recorded. So 
um, yeah, that's just something to look forward to into May. I know there's a few of you here that have got prolapses and you're thinking about, um, uh, you've been doing a lot of thinking about what's going on with it. And she is amazing. I have yeah, been really enjoying following her stuff. Um, I'm gonna share a YouTube link actually into the groups um, over the next few weeks when we start May, just so that you can go and watch her um, being interviewed by Dr. Bree uh, from Femfusion Fitness um, uh, and learn a little bit about what she's, going, what she's all about because her approach to prolapse is very, very different to um, what you've currently been experiencing. So I won't give too much away. You, I'll put the YouTube Ooh, link. Exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting. I thought to myself, I'm going to go out there and find the best people to answer these questions. Um, because we're all online now, so it doesn't matter. And hopefully she's, she's I know she's very, very busy at the moment, but um, hopefully between us, we can come up with a solution as to how we can help you um, or maybe point you in the direction of the right people. Um, so again, the same with Tanis. If you uh, liked her style and you think you want to find out a little bit more, I'm sure she does online stuff. Um, I'll, I'll share her details over the, um, well, I'll share her details in the group tomorrow when I share the recording. All right. I'll let you all go now. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm going to bed. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Nikki. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.